Hi kids, welcome to this week's story time. My name is Tommy. And my name is George. We're so excited to have you here with us. Today we have a special story about God doing impossible things. Impossible things? What does that mean, Tommy? When something is impossible, it means it can't not be done. What are some impossible things? Good question. Well, I would say flying is impossible. I can fly? Watch! <whistles> See, I told you. Impossible. Ouch! You're right, Tommy. Flying is pretty impossible. But flying is not impossible for God. I mean, if he wanted to, he could make us fly. So why can't we? Well, we may not be able to fly on our own, but God gave someone the idea to make airplanes. That's how we can fly around the world. Well, well, I still believe that God can do impossible things. How about you? Do you believe God can do impossible things? If not, I'm sure this story will change your mind. Let's take a look. Tommy, do you have popcorn? No, I thought you brought it. Well, I have an apple. Well, I guess that will have to do. Imagine a land with no water. You're thirsty, you're hungry, and there's no food because you can't grow food without water. This is exactly what the Israelites had to live through. During that time, there was a king called Ahab who ruled the land. There was a drought because King Ahab stopped serving God. It seemed like there was no hope and like there would be no end. But that's when God called a man named Elijah to come and make a difference. And Elijah went to King Ahab and said, I want to meet with 450 of the Baal prophets and 400 Asherah prophets at Mount Carmel. So the prophets gathered together at Mount Carmel. When Elijah got there, he gave them some instructions. Get some wood, get a sacrifice, and lay the sacrifice on the wood. So Elijah and the prophets all got one bull and they got it ready for sacrifice. Then Elijah gave these following instructions to the prophets. Put your sacrifice on the altar over the wood, then call to your God and I will call to mine. And whoever God answers with fire is the true God. And so from morning until noon, the false prophets called to their God. Oh, Baal, answer us, send fire. Yes, send down fire. Show this crazy man, Elijah, who's the real God. There was no answer. By noon, Elijah started to make fun of them. Maybe Baal is in the washroom. Maybe he went on a trip. Maybe he's taking a nap. So the Baal prophets got even louder. They even started hurting themselves. They really wanted to hear from Baal. But there was still no answer. Baal, answer us! Send fire! So finally, Elijah got tired of waiting. And so he told everyone to gather around him. He collected 12 large stones and started to build an altar. Can you pretend you're big, picking up a large boulder with me? Ooh, pick it up. Ooh, now put it down. And then he gathered some wood. Can you pretend you're chopping some wood with me? And then finally, he dug a trench around it. Grab your shovel and dig. Elijah got four jars of water and he poured over the water. 
water on the altar three times. The false prophets thought he was really crazy. There is no way that this altar will light up in fire now. There's so much water on it. Elijah really is crazy. Huh. Yeah. At least we won't be the only one to look crazy at the end of the day. Elijah then prayed to God, ignoring their comments. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known that you alone are God in Israel. Answer me and show these people who you are. And what do you think happened? God answered with fire. Fire fell from heaven and consumed the sacrifice, the wood, and all the water. Everything was completely dry. And everyone knew that God was the one and only God capable of anything. Wow. God is able to do anything, all the impossible things. But the story does not end there. The people were crying for rain. This drought was still not over. Elijah went to Mount Carmel again to pray. He put his head in between his knees, like this. Can you do that with me? Then Elijah sent one of his men to go to the top of the mountain and look out at the ocean. Jude, go take a look at the top of the mountain. Look out towards the ocean and come tell me what you see. So the servant went and looked and saw nothing and reported as much to Elijah. Elijah sent him back again and again seven times. The seventh time though, the servant saw something. Elijah, I saw something, a cloud, a cloud as small as a man's hand. It's coming up from the sea. Elijah sent word back to King Ahab that rain was coming. And sure enough, a large, dark cloud came up over the land and rain poured just as Elijah said it would happen. Wow, what a great story. Can you say this with me? All things are possible with God. Can you say it again? All things are possible with God. Say it one more time, and this time I want you to say it as loud as you can. All things are possible with God. This didn't happen because Elijah had any special magical powers. This happened because Elijah prayed and believed in God who is able to do impossible things. God is not a silent God who doesn't answer. God hears us whenever we cry out to him. We don't have to beg. We don't have to do extreme things to get his attention like the false prophets did. All we have to do is pray to God and trust him. Sometimes God will answer us just as we ask. Other times, he will answer us in a different way. But God always hears us. There's nothing too big, too small, or too impossible for God to do. Are you guys ready to do your memory verse with me this week? Let's get it started. So, I remain confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Psalm 27, 13. Can you do it one more time with me? I remain confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Psalm 27, 13. Have a great week, everyone.